and welcome to another booktube video from me lauren from lauren and the books i hope you're all doing very very well this thursday before i get onto the book haul and let me tell you there is a book haul my book buying has gone berserk uh, this isn't even all the books <laughs> there's still more books that haven't arrived i've been buying books from various different places um independent bookshops and things and uh, they're all arriving at different times it's like bloody christmas it almost is Christmas now. Um, but first, before we even start on the books, I just wanted to talk about the fact that tomorrow afternoon is cosy reading afternoon. So I've been doing cosy reading night every other Friday throughout um, lockdown. And um, tomorrow, I've been doing something slightly different. I feel like I'm a bloody parrot the amount of times I say this. But doing something slightly different with cosy reading night every single time we do it. And tomorrow, it's cosy reading afternoon. So tomorrow afternoon, Friday the 12th of June, between the hours of 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. BST, um, it's cosy reading afternoon. So it will work. This much as the, the same way as Cozy Reading Night does, but in the afternoon. I'll be active on Twitter and Instagram throughout using the hashtag, hashtag Cozy Reading Afternoon. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, come join me. I'll be on Twitter and Instagram. There'll be a, um, there'll be a vlog going up afterwards. There's a TBR um, that I will link down below. Dave and I have got some really good books we're really excited to read. Um, and yeah, so come, come join, come join. But let's get on with the actual books. So um, you will notice that within this book haul there are a hell of a lot of books by um, authors of colour, which is the plan from now on, guys. Should have been doing it up until now. Uh, we'll be doing it going forward. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, lots of books. Basically, every single one I've bought, apart from one that Jen sent me, which I will move on to there. But yeah, so let's start. So the first one I've got here is Silver Sparrow by Tiari Jones. Now, Tiari Jones wrote An American Marriage, which won the Women's Prize for Fiction last year. I really love that book. It's one of my favourite books from last year. It was like a real grower. You will know, if you've been here a while, that when I... I either, well, I mean, everyone does this. You either love something instantly or it really grows on you. Is that, is that a fair comment? But like, American Marriage, as I was reading it, I was very much enjoying it. But afterwards, I was talking about it to people like, oh, I've just read this book and this happened and it was so amazing and blah, 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 blah. I really, really loved it. So, so excited that there's a new book of hers out. And this is Silver Sparrow. And this is about um, um, a man's... Uh, a man's deception um, and the fact that he has two families um, and the two daughters and, and one one family so he's got a, a family a public family um, and then a secret family and the secret family know about the public family but the public family don't know about the secret family and then I believe that the two daughters from different families um, become friends um, and then uh, yeah that's uh, that's what, what's happening I'm really really excited if it's halfway as good as an American marriage is. I'm going to really, really love it. So very, very excited to, to crack on with that and that'll be happening. I mean, the thing is, when you get a book haul, which you're really excited about all the books, you keep thinking, oh, I'm going to read that first. Oh, I'm going to read that first. I mean, I want to read them all first. I want to read them all first. Um, but yeah, very excited about that. So the next four books are all um, YA books. Oh, I just knocked that. Uh, the first one is one that I have read a few, uh, uh, two or three times maybe. Um, and uh, you, I'm sure you're well aware of it. It's Noughts and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. Now, um, this is a book that I've read a number of times. I thought I owned it. And if I didn't own it, I thought my sister owned it because my sister was actually the person who told me about this um, and can't find it anywhere. She hasn't got a copy. I haven't got a copy. Then I thought maybe it was on my e-reader. I can't find my e-reader either. So I bought myself a new copy and actually it's bigger than I remember. It must have been a couple of years since I've last read this. Um, and recently it's been made into a TV program for um, BBC. I don't know if it's gone anywhere else. If you're in the US or anything, have you seen Noughts and Crosses? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but yeah, I uh, and I'm re the reason I bought this is because I'm reading this for two book clubs this this month. Um, so my my online book club with my friends that I run through Facebook, um, we, we're all taking it in turns to pick a book, and somebody else picked this. Um, and then also my my work book club, which is currently an online book club because we're not meeting because of um, coronavirus. This was also the pick, so I'm uh, very excited to, to revisit it for two book clubs. So it means I'll get double the discussion out of it, which is very good. So um, you may well be aware of this story, but this is um, a, a love story predominantly between um, Sefi and Callum. Um, uh, Sefi is, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's a love story, but there's a lot in there about race, about class, um, about... Um, uh, writing and things like that um, and Sefi is of an upper class and um, Callum is of a lower class and his mother actually works for Sefi's family um, and his brother uh, his brother's uh, one of his brothers is a sort of revolutionary um, and yeah this, it's the first in a series of four uh, maybe five five yeah I don't think I've read that one that last one I've definitely read more, but yeah, it's um, really, really great. And um, I actually also got it because, um, well, I mean, I got it from a book club anyway, but I really want David to read it as well. I think he's going to really, really enjoy this. Um, so yeah, that. And then as I said, I've got a few more 
a YAs, which is unusual, but I'm excited about all of them. They all sounded really great. So these two are um, both that I found out about on Instagram, actually. There's been a lot of um, sharing resources and things on Instagram, um, and I keep seeing a lot of... Um, books that um i i want to read on instagram and two of these are the, the ones that uh, i went out and got them almost instantly uh, the, and the first one is uh, jackpot by nick stone so this is about um a, a 17 year old girl rico um she works in a garage and um uh they sell a lottery ticket which uh, wins the jackpot um but the uh, the money goes um unclaimed um so it's uh, rico sort of her what what she does what, what, whether she, I, I don't know the logistics behind it how she potentially gets her hands on this money I think that's what happens um, but it says it's a book about um, class and about money and about having money and not having money um, and yeah it sounds really really great so looking forward to that um, and then I've got Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett um, so this is about a young lots of young you know I like a book about a sort of coming of age story about girls nice uh, and this is about Simone um, it says here Simone has got high school down so she's got like friends I think she's directing the, the the musical in the school and she's smooching with the most popular boy in school who's really hot um, but she's also got HIV um, and um, I don't again I don't know the logistics behind it but the last time um, she told someone about the fact she had HIV the fallout from it was sort of catastrophic I believe devastating she says here um, and uh, someone leaves a note or something in her locker um, and she starts believing that maybe um, people know that she's got HIV so that is also sounds amazing and then this one is a book which um, by Elizabeth Acevedo this is Clap When You Land um, now I've read two, Elizabeth Acevedo two of her books. The first one I read was The Poet X, which I loved, thought it was amazing. Um, and then the second one, uh, which I read last year, was um, With the Fire on High, which I didn't enjoy as much. I found a little bit... I don't know, maybe it's just a little bit young for me. I mean, I am young. No, as in like, I don't know, it just felt a little bit teenager. I mean, they're written for teenagers, of course. Um, but this one, I think I'm going to enjoy it as much as the, poet X, uh, as the Poet X. Firstly, because it's written as the Poet X was in verse. So it's written in these sort of like um, poems almost. Uh, I feel very excited about that because that is, as I said, how the Poet X was written. Um, and, uh, and also it's about sisterhood. Oh, I've got, I've got a bit of a mark on it. It's about sisterhood. So it's about two sisters and they share, this, they share the same father. One lives in the Dominican Republic and one lives in New York. And he sort of flies, um, for the summer, he flies to the Dominican Republic and spend time with Camino, who's in the Dominican Republic, and Yahira, who's in New York City. So um, he never spends time with them together. Um, and then on one of these flights, he, the, the, the plane goes down and he, it, he dies. Um, and it's a book about that um, and sort of sisterhood over distance and like what you sort of do with that. And it says here, forgiveness and loss um, and secrets so yeah I think it's going to be great very much looking forward to that then I've also got The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware um, this is a book I think I was listening to an audio uh, no I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about Ruth Ware's books and how they're sort of like um gothic -y sort of crime thrillers and it sounded like interesting for me so I've, I've picked this I've, I've picked this up and it says when Rowan comes across the advert it seems too good to be true a live-in nanny position with an extremely generous salary what she doesn't know is that she's stepping into a nightmare one that will end with a child dead and her in a cell awaiting trial for murder um so yeah so I picked that up and um, I think it's about a sort of big house in the middle of nowhere um which would be great and then as I said Jen sent me a book so um <clears throat> You will know that Jen and I and a lot of booktubers have been very much enjoying the Free Decline series, which is written by Nikki French. Um, it's a series about a psychoanalyst and um, her, uh, like, helping the police out with cases or not helping the police out with cases. Um, and uh, Jen recently did a video where she talked about um, trying to find a book that she enjoyed as much as those. And the obvious place to go is previous work by that author um and uh she read secret smile by nikki french and i was like oh i must also get onto that and she said well let me send it to you so she kindly did because she's a babe um and this is also about sisterhood um and it's about miranda cotton and she thinks she's put boyfriend brendan out of her life for good but two weeks later she discovers that he's intimately involved in her sis with her sister what began as an embarrassment becomes threatening then utterly terrifying and i also saw that this picture is actually Camden Lock so I believe it's probably set in an, an area of London that I sort of semi know which is um, also interesting and then the next book I've got is Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan this is on one of those lists of things it's either a wrap up or a haul I did recently where I was talking about I'd seen a list of if you like normal people you'll probably like this and I do like normal people I love the book the first time around I love the audio book I'd listened to the audio book maybe twice since and at the series I loved and my mum and sister have both just listened to um, normal people on audio again and I was thinking might be time for me to listen to that again 
anyway this book is from a list of like if you like normal people you will like this book um and it's a book set in ireland you know i love a book set in ireland well actually it's not a book about a book set in ireland it's about a girl from ireland she's 22 her name's ava um and she leaves ireland and uh, takes a job um a badly paid job in hong kong teaching english grammar to rich children um and uh yeah it's uh it says Ju uh, you, you find out more about julian who likes to spend money on ava and lets her move into his guest room edith who ada meets while julian is out of town and actually is listens to her when she talks about money love cynicism unspoken feelings and unlikely connections exciting times ensue so yeah excited for that excited times exciting books uh, the next book i bought is i actually bought this and i didn't realize it was the second in a series but i am still going to go ahead and read it and then eventually because i imagine i'm going to very much enjoy it uh read the first in the series and that's heaven my home by attica lock um so this i saw a, a review of this and it was described as texan noir um so you're following uh the uh, a ranger darren matthews um and as i said this is the second in the series the first one is called bluebird bluebird um and uh, you're following him and his uh, sort of investigating and uh, the, the case he's looking into is uh, the case of a, uh, a sort of like local local famous white supremacist family i think they're called like the, the, i think they belong to like an aryan brotherhood um a young boy the, the the son of the the leader of this brotherhood um goes missing and darren um who is black has to help them um find out uh, find where where he's gone and this is all happening in um when when trump's just come into um he's just coming he's just been elected um so yeah it sounds like it's going to be a sort of uh, like what what a climate that is was anyway and then to have this sort of like book plonked in there i think it's going to be amazing and like i said it's a it's a series and i think there's a there's a thread that i think as is with sort of like investigating stories and things like that thrillers crime thrillers um there's a thread that sort of runs through the series and i think the thread that runs through the series is the fact that his um his mother's blackmailing him and i don't really know the details behind that because i haven't read the first well i haven't read the second book yet but i don't know much about the the first book um, and i think that's the sort of thread that runs throughout and then each individual book is an individual case so yeah looking forward to reading this and then um get get into bluebird bluebird so yeah excited about that um this, uh, then I've got two non-fiction books. Now, as I said, I've still got books that are arriving and it just seems that the books that have, like the books that have arrived have been the fiction ones. <laughs> the ones that haven't arrived have been the non-fiction. So I've got two non-fictions, but there's more non-fiction to come. Um, and uh, this one is uh, My Time Among the, the Whites uh, by, uh, it says Notes from an Unfinished Education and this is by Janine Capo Crusay. Um, I actually first saw this in Mercedes channel. It's a collection of essays. Um, <clears throat> it says here, what does it mean to find yourself a stranger in the country where you were born? Um, this is about Janine who was raised in Miami, um, her parents were Cuban refugees. Um and uh, they've named her after a Miss American, uh, Miss America pageant winner. And um, yeah, it's a series of essays. <clears throat> now, I'll be honest, what drew me to this essay collection when I first heard Mercedes talk about it was the fact that there's an essay in there about Disney World or Disneyland. Um, it's called Magic Kingdoms. Uh, and it talks about her um, visits to, to, to the Magic Kingdom. And I was like, David would love to read that. And I really want David to read more non-fiction um, that isn't about animals <laughs> because that seems to be all the non-fiction he's, he's watching the michael jordan documentary he's got his headphones in he doesn't even know i'm talking about him um and i was thought maybe i could lure him in with that but i'm very this is another one that i'm like super pumped about want to start reading it instantly um and yeah can't wait to can't wait to read that so that's that and then the last one is actually one that i'm reading for cozy reading afternoon tomorrow and that's don't touch my hair by emma debiri you would have seen me mention this in my cozy reading night tbr um emma is a um, irish nigerian author and um she has written this book which is a, a sort of part memoir part sort of exploration of cultural appropriation slavery um gentrification um it's science mathematics um and actually on flipping through this book because there's um not illustrations but um like photos and things through it the, the section that is about oh and it's all told through hair is what i should have said the sections um about maths just look so interesting like that's like about the maths and this bit here relating braids to the sort of concept of infinity and yeah it just sounds like it sounds like it's gonna be amazing um so i'm very very much looking forward to 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 reading that so those are the books that I've recently got my hands on. Let me know. I can sit back now and relax. Um, let me know if you are excited to read any of these books. What books you've recently got your hands on. Uh, yeah, here they all are. And I will see you all again soon for another butcher video. Go!